Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, and ye shall know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. The beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give water in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself, and they shall show forth my praise. For such is one, a new thing in me. Amen. Would you just point to yourself and say a new thing, a new thing. In, me. in me? Point to your neighbor and say a new thing, a new thing. In, you. in you. You may be seated in the presence Amen. of the Lord. We're about to enter into our Lenten season. Wednesday being Ash Wednesday is the beginning of the Lenten season and for this house, we will go from that Wednesday until the Saturday before Palm Sunday. I know it's just no, it is a customary to go into Easter, but for this house, we're going to go into the Sunday before Palm Sunday, the Saturday before Palm Sunday. And this house is sacrificing something that costs you something. We talked about that last week, how we want to give up something that costs you something. I, I can't tell you what to give up because I don't know what costs you anything. I just give you my example of what I'm giving up. I'm giving up souls and I'm giving up the WWE because that's going to cost me something. So you got to do something that's going to cost you. And last week I gave you four things that you're going to accomplish while you are on in this Lenten season. And in the midst of that, God told me to tell you one other thing. If you go through this Lenten season the way you're supposed to, Sacrifice and giving up something that costs you something. God said, I'm going to do a new thing in you. A new thing in you. Some of us need a new thing. Because the old thing ain't working. Some of us need a new thing because the old thing is getting on our nerves. I can tell from your Facebook notes. The old thing is getting on your nerves. The old thing ain't getting you where you need to go. And God said, all you need to do is follow my instructions for this next season. And I'm going to do a new thing. So the question I have to ask you this morning, may I ask you just a question? May I ask you just a question? Are you ready for a new thing? Everybody crying, Lord, do a new thing, Lord, do a new thing, Lord, do a new thing. But in order for him to do a new thing, he got to cut out some old things. All right. In order for him to do a new thing, he got to dead some old things. He got to get rid of some old things, some old relationships, some old attitudes, some old problems, some old unforgiveness. Got to get rid of some old things in order to make room for the new thing. He got to redecorate your house. All right. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Then you get new furniture, but you don't want new furniture until you get new paint. Oh, <laughs> uh, you get no witness. You, you want new things, but you want to make sure the house looks right for the new thing. God said, I want to do a new thing, but I got to get your house right first. All right. Right. So I, I need to take down that old wallpaper that's been up too long. The, the old habits that you had that you still got on the wall. I need to take that down. and I need to put a new fresh coat. I need to take up that old carpet that you got laying down. The way you talk to people all the time. I need to take that up. And I, I need to lay a new foundation, a new floor for you. Because I want to do a new thing in you. But I'm not going to do a new thing in the old In the New Testament, he says, I'm not going to put new wine in an old bottle. Because the old bottle can't handle the new wine. What God wants to do for you in this Lenten season, your old self can't handle it. <laughs> it, it can't handle it. That's why he wants to do a new thing because the thing he got for you is so great that he needs to redecorate everything that's going on around you. And he can't put what he got precious in 
kingdom in your house until he changed something. He needs to move some furniture around. What do you mean move some furniture around? He needs to move some of your priorities. Oh, God. He needs to move some of your priorities. But some of your priorities are in the wrong place. And so he's trying to move some priorities in a different place so he can put a new thing in your house. When we begin to look at chapter 43, and I read the first 11 chapters of it, I know you said, well, Pastor, reading is such a long verse for the scripture lesson. No, you know, that didn't need to be that long, I know, but I needed you to hear what the word was saying. When you look at chapter 43, you begin at the first verse. If you look at the whole chapter, it really sounds like somebody's in love. Read it for yourself when you get home. It, chapter 43 lets us know that God is in love with somebody for what he tells us in 43. Not only do we know he's in love, but we know he's passionately in love. We know he's a protector of his love. We know he makes a way for who he loves. This text lets us know when you go to the first chapter, the first verse of the text, he says, but now thus said the Lord create that created thee, O Jacob, he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I, I have bought you. I have rescued you. I have delivered you out of something that you in. I have redeemed you. See, that redeem also means you messed up and you wasted some time. But because I'm redeeming you, I'm going to also redeem the time. All right. All right. Yes. 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 <laughs> I feel like preaching. I, I said, and then he said, then he said, I called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Some of you don't hear him calling you because you don't recognize your name. Because the name he called you is too nice for you, you think. The name he's calling you is too wonderful for you, you think. You think he should be calling you by a different name. But God said, I'm not calling you according to what you are now. I'm calling you according to what I'm going to make you. I'm calling you by your name. Yes. That's part of your new thing. He wants to give you a new name. Every time he began to change people's lives in the Testament, in the Old Testament, even in the New Testament, he changed their name. He changed Abel to Abraham, Sarai to Sarah, Jacob to Israel. And then in the New Testament, he said, Saul, your name shall no longer be Saul, but it shall be Paul. He changed their name. And God is calling you by the name that you are. Why don't you answer? Why don't you answer? You know what the problem is? Can I tell you what the problem is? Can I tell you what the problem is? The problem is you're too hard on yourself. Mm, can't get no help. I must have hit a real little red body got quiet in here. You, you, you too hard on yourself. All right, all right. And, and, and you would be right if it was based on you. Well, come on. You would be right if it was based on you, but it ain't based on you. It's based on the righteousness of Christ. It's based on his blood, and his blood can cover anything. So that means you don't have a case that's too hard for God. You ain't done nothing that's so bad that the blood can't cover. So my question is, if the blood can cover it, why are you so hard on yourself? If the blood can cover it, why you won't answer God when he's calling you by your name? Because the name he's trying to call you by is the name he said ye shall be. Because he called those days that are not as though they were. Abraham didn't have any children when he changed his name. Sarah didn't have any children when he changed her name. Paul was a great evangelist when he changed his name. But he said, I see who you will be. And I'm calling you by your name. Well, 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 that's up. And I don't. Yes, sir. When I called you, well, I called you by your name. Okay. And then we see him as a protector. 
Verse 2 says, When thou pass through the water, I'll be with thee. Through the river, thou shalt not over, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, they shall not burn. Neither shall the flames kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Yes, sir. Sounds like a love letter to me. What about you? He said, I don't care what you're going through. You know what you want to hurt you. The special one in your life. Hey, you know what you want to. I don't care what we go through, baby. We'll be together. I don't care what we face. We'll be together. As long as I got you, baby, I'm all right. My God. And God is saying to you today, I don't care what you go through. I got your back. All right. I don't care what you face. I got you. If you walk through the flood, it's not going to overflow you. If you walk
thing. Oh, glory. Why, why, why just name it a new thing? Why, why I don't specifically say what the new thing is? Because it's different according to what's happening in your life. Because yes. some of you don't need what some of the other you need to in your life. And I said, I'm going to cover it all because I'm going to let you know I'm just going to do a new thing so it's going to cover the whole house so no matter what needs to be done, it is a word for you at a present time. Yes. You want to get deep, I get deep with you. It's a rainbow word. Ah. And you want to get deep, it's, it's, a, it's a rainbow word. You want to get spiritual, it's a rainbow word. That's the one, it's a rainbow word. A rainbow word is a spoken word that's not written in his word. He just gave you a rainbow word. He wants to take you higher. Yes. yes. And he writes a love letter in the 43rd chapter of Isaiah. Yes. But let me go back to the lesson text. Because I'm about to get out of here. Let me go back to the lesson text. He says, he says, catch this. Lesson text 43 and 18. Listen to what he says in verse 18. Listen to what he says in verse 18. He says, remember ye not the former things. Uh -huh. Neither consider the things. He don't 
don't want you to know that even though you fail, that's what God uses. He loves specializing in imperfect people. He loves specializing in people who are falling down. Why is that so? Because those are the people who can reach back and grab somebody else. He don't need no holier than thou. Person think they got it going on. I am holy. I ain't never done nothing wrong. You ain't gonna reach nobody. somebody in the church because none of them are all that holy. That's right. That's right. No. And God needs somebody. This is a word, the word. This is a word on the street. This is a word on the street. I got this is a word on the street. This is a word on the street. God needs somebody who's real. Let's spell it. Let's spell it. R E A L. Real. If you can't be real, God can't use you. That's right. Like 
He wants to be worshipped. See, God is like that discovery commercial. You got you on the other side. God said, I got you on the other side. And I want you to treat me like I would treat you. Yes. 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 That's right. <laughs> so he created us because if he wanted church, all he had was the chair bills and the angel, and he could have had church. But he wanted somebody like us. Yes. Yes. Mm. In our perfectness. Because in time, God said, out of the mouth of babes is perfect praise. That means he ain't looking for you to pronounce your nouns. Yeah. You know, when you're a horse, you need to pronounce. Mm -hmm. You need to pronounce. That's right. Please pronounce that when you say that. Oh. <laughs> if he wanted all that, none of us would be in the choir. That's right. That's for sure. I know I wouldn't be. I don't know about you, but I know I wouldn't be. That's right. Sit me down, because I can't. Do all that. God wasn't looking for that. You know what he was looking for? He was looking for somebody whose heart was right. My God. And if you got a right heart, he can do the thing. So let me get back. I got to close. Yeah, let me get back. Let me get back. One, two, one. Verse 18. Remember ye now the former days. Need to consider the things of old. Behold, which means stand still and look. Yes. Behold, I will do a new yes. thing. Yes. And this is how it says it's going to happen. It's going to spring forth. Yes. Yes. I, if, if, if you let him do what he wants to do, before you know it, it's going to spring forth. For, which means right. it's going to jump out when you least expect it. It's going to come right. and hit you when you don't even know it's coming. It's going to spring forth. Spring forth. Yeah. And shall ye not know it? Yes. You, you're going to look back and you're going to see it happening. Yeah. He's going to do a new thing. Yeah. This, and this is why God, I like this part of the verse, because he said this because he wants to let you know, ain't nothing too hard. Look what he said, I'll make a way in the wilderness, yeah. a river, rivers in the desert. Yeah. You never heard of a river in the desert. Yeah. Right. The desert is dry. Yeah. Why is it dry? Because ain't no rain coming down. How can you have a river when there's no rain? How can you have a way in the wilderness when there's no path in the wilderness? God said, is that impossible? I'm going to do the impossible to let you know that your situation ain't too hard for me. If I can put a river in the desert and make a way in the wilderness, I can fix your broken heart. I can turn your life around. I can do it for you. Which one is harder? A river in the desert or fixing your broken heart? He wanted to let you know. He wanted to let you know. He wanted to let you know. I can do it. And I specialize in the impossible. Yes. The harder it is, the more I want the case. You know what I'm thinking about. God is a, is a, is a Phil Jackson. Uh -huh. Phil, before he started coaching it, the Lakers said, I just want to coach the Lakers. I just, I just want to coach the Lakers because I got Kobe and I got Shaq and it'll work real good in my triangle defense. If somebody just give me the chance because I see the potential if they just got the right coaching. God said, I see your problems. I see how hard it is. I just want a chance to work it out. I can work it out if you just give me a chance. I know it seems difficult. I know it looks like that your Kobe and your Shaq won't work together, but if you let me be your coach, I'll bring them together. I'll get you three championship if you just go. Yes, yes, yes. help me here if you just let me. Well, let me work it out for you. Yeah. Mm. Yes. All right. Mm. Work it out for you. So what is God saying as I'm closing? He said, your problem is his potential. All right. All right. My your God. problem is his raw ingredient that he needs to work it out. Yes. And he can't bake this cake that he wants to bake. He can't do this new thing without your problem. Because All right. All right. Right. your problem is the secret ingredient in his new thing. All right. All right. All right. All right. Like so, like so, why are you holding so tight? To the problem. Well, God said, I got the milk. Uh huh. I got the flour. 
I got the sugar. I got the yeast. I got a little butter. All I need is your ingredient to make this cake. I got everything I need, except you won't give me your problem. I got everything I need, but you won't give me your trouble. I got everything I need, but you won't drop it in the ball. So I can mix it up, and I can put it in the oven, and I can make a new thing. Because you're holding on to it too tight. And it's no use as long as you're holding on to it. That's why it's causing you so many problems, because you're holding on to it. Because it only really can't be used until you give it up. And when you give it up and give it to God, God said, I'll do a new thing. I'll do a new thing. I'll do a new thing. Last verse in the book. Isaiah 43 and 22. Isaiah 43 and 22. Because this is what some of you are. Isaiah 43 and 22. Look what he said. This ain't for the whole house. This is for some of y'all. Mm. <laughs> when I read it, I said, no, no, this ain't for the whole house. But God said, yeah, this is for some of the house. Look what he says. Isaiah 43 and 22. In the King James Version, it says, but thou has not called upon me, O Jacob. But thou has been weary of me, O Israel. Let me give you, you said, what did that mean, Pastor? Well, let me give you the New Living Translation. This is what the New Living Translation says. But, but dear family of Jacob, you refuse to ask for my help. You have grown tired of me, O Israel. You said, I have grown Yes, you have, because you won't be obedient. Go ahead, sir. Yes, you have, because you're running to Beyonce, and you're running to Alicia Keys, and you're running to Usher, and you're running to all of them to give you some deliverance. My God. Oh, I hit it home. You're, you're running to the Budweiser. You're running to crack. You're running to pot. You're running to all those for your help. And God is saying, you must got tired of me because you're running to everybody else. You keep jumping from relationship to relationship to relationship because you haven't tried God. And God said, no, you haven't said it out of your mouth, but your actions say you're tired of me. Because if you weren't tired of me, you wouldn't run from me. You only run from what you're tired of. Okay, go ahead and put this out. Mm -hmm. And you run to something else that you think can help you. That's why you run from one relationship to the other. Because you got tired of that one, so you ran to a new one. That's why you run from church to church. Because you got tired of that one, you run to a new one. And God said, you won't call me. You won't call me because you must be tired. And whenever we run to something else besides God, we tell God, God, I'm tired of you. Because that's why you're running. Tired of you calling me to be a missionary, I want to be one. Tired of you calling me to be a preacher, because I want to be one. Tired of you calling me to do right, because I want to do right. So I'm running. The reason why we don't want to think like that because we don't want to say that we're telling God we're tired of him. But whenever you run from it, you're tired of it. And God told me to ask you this. What have I done to you? What have I done to you? I tell you, the only thing I did, the only thing I did, I woke you up this morning. Yes. And you had your right mind. Yes. 
and hear the articulation of the speech. Yeah. And when you woke up, you could still stretch this leg. And you can still stretch that leg. And you can still raise that hand. And you can still raise that hand. And when you woke up, you won't lie. You still had eyesight. You still had an appetite. You still heard. What, what, what have I done to you? But when you woke up this morning, you still had a roof over your head. When you woke up this morning, you still woke up in the bed. Even if you may not have the mattress that you want, you still woke up in some kind of bed. When you woke up, when you drove down the road today, you still had a car. Right? You bumping up and down. You still made it. Church, what have I done to you? My God. You still able to dress? You still have a job? Yes. Still got a paycheck? Yes, Lord. What, what, what have I done to you for you to run from me? Tell me so, so, so I can I can change. I, I can't help you if you don't tell me. Tell me what I've done. Maybe it's a misunderstanding. Just talk to me. Tell me what I've done. That you don't want my company. That you keep on running. It's just a misunderstanding, Lord. When you keep running, you won't talk to me. So how am I supposed to show? It's a misunderstanding. My God. I'm supposed to know. Because you keep running. God wants to do a little thing. God wants to do a little thing. Question is, are you ready for a new thing? Rest to your feet on the Yes, God. Thank you.